Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 42 of the chapter Equilibrium. In this video, I'm going to tell you about solubility equilibria of sparingly soluble salts. On the basis of the solubility of salts, salts can be categorized into five categories. They are highly soluble or hygroscopic salts, soluble salts, slightly soluble salts, sparingly soluble salts and insoluble salts. Let us understand, although they are, the three main categories are category 1, category 2 and category 3 as I have written them down here, the other two are actually extremes of these peripheral ones. That is soluble salts which are highly highly soluble and extreme of soluble salts would be highly soluble salts. So these, these two are actually extremes of those categories. So let us understand what, uh, how in terms of solubility do we categorize these salts? Which salts do we call as highly soluble? Soluble salts are those where the solubility of the salt, if you put 0.1 moles of the salt should dissolve in one liter of the solution. So the molarity of the solution is 0.1 and any salt that has a molarity greater than this or, or the soluble ions are greater than this molarity, that kind of a salt is known as a soluble salt. But a salt that has solubility much, much, much higher than 0.1 molar moles per liter uh, solubility of the salt is known as a highly soluble salt and such salts are so soluble that they are hygroscopic in nature. What do you mean by hygroscopic? That not only if you add salt to water will it dissolve very quickly, these salts have such a high solubility that they would absorb even the moisture present in air and absorb it and become wet and dissolve themselves in that moisture and convert that water vapor into liquid water. They have such a strong tendency to get dissolved in water. So we say such salts are highly soluble, so much so that they are hygroscopic in nature. Have you noticed that if you leave salt, common salt during rainy days, leave a little salt, a, uh, a few grains of salt that may have fallen off, you would notice that after a little while you see droplets of water there. And uh, the salt, it absorbs the moisture and it becomes wet and you actually see the water there. So such salts are hygroscopic examples of such hygroscopic salts or highly soluble salts are calcium chloride, sodium chloride. They absorb the moisture from the air and convert it into water and dissolve themselves in that water. The next category or rather we should say category one is that of soluble salts. Soluble salts have a solubility greater than 0.1 moles per liter or 0.1 molarity. So where they are, they are pretty soluble but they are not hygroscopic. They are not going to absorb the moisture. They are not that, uh, that desperate to really be dissolved in water. But if you put them in water, they would gladly uh, separate. The, they would get ionized and they would dissolve in water very easily with a concentration of more than 0.1 molar. The category that falls between the soluble and sparingly soluble is the slightly soluble salts. The slightly soluble salts fall between 0.1 molar, which is soluble salts, and 0.01 molar. Between this range, the molarity range of 0.1 molar and 0.01 molar would be the slightly soluble salts. They, between this range, we say these are the salts that are not, you wouldn't call them soluble salts, they are only slightly soluble. The third category is of sparingly soluble salts. Sparingly soluble means they are hardly soluble. You would say they barely dissolve. You put it, they have a solubility of less than 0.01 moles per liter, which means that if you, um, it is less than 0.01, a hundred times less than one. So that is a, a very, very small um, molarity of salt is present. So such salts are known as the sparingly soluble salts and those which do not allow even that much a few molecules 
to enter the solution and get ionized and uh, enter the solution and dissolve in it such salts are known as insoluble where you see that the solubility their solubility is much 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 lesser than even 0.01 molar solution of the salt so on the basis of solubility these are the categories in which we can category or in which we can divide the salts what affects this solubility what decides whether a salt will be soluble will it be sparingly soluble will it be hygroscopic or what does this solubility depend on the solubility of salts depends on a number of factors but there are two main factors major factors that decide the solubility of salts these two factors are lattice enthalpy and the solvation enthalpy or enthalpy of solvation and lattice enthalpy we have studied in thermodynamics about lattice enthalpy but let me just now um, remind you a little bit of what lattice a salt is made up of ions which are bound together by electrostatic forces of attraction for example if you have sodium chloride sodium chloride forms a cubic structure where every sodium ion is surrounded by a chloride ion and they form and each chloride is surrounded by sodium ions and they remain attracted to each other due to electrical forces or coulombic forces of attraction if you have to separate these molecules if you have to se uh, sorry not molecules these ions you will have to use some energy for example let us say that this is a salt all right it has a cation it has an ion it, let us say it has three uh, parts in it and i want to separate out the ions so in order to separate out the ions, the lids, what do I have to do? I have to use energy. I have to use energy to remove this cap. I have to use energy to remove this cap. And now I have all the three parts separated, right? So in lattice enthalpy, when you have one mole of a salt, you have to use energy to separate those ions. The energy required to separate the ions from one mole of a salt is known as its lattice enthalpy. So lattice enthalpy is first of all how much is the attraction between the ions. The greater the lattice enthalpy the more difficult it is to separate out the salt. And therefore the salts which have very very high lattice enthalpy it will not be easy to separate out their ions and that would affect its solubility because in order to dissolve the salt you first have to separate those ions and in order to separate those ions you have to use lattice enthalpy so whenever you are using energy you are adding you are using energy to carry out a process you are providing energy to the system the energy is said to be positive when energy is being added but all changes all chemical changes or all processes usually take place in order to acquire stability why are you studying chemistry you're studying chemistry so that your life becomes stable if I gave you a choice that nothing would happen if you would if you could go just now with your friends and have a good time with them and uh, it's your free will you know whatever you do you could you could go out with your friends have a good time or you could sit here and listen to what I have to tell you I'm sure 99.9% .9 of you would get up and walk away with your friends if there were no consequences if my teaching would not be bringing you stability so the, any process that takes place usually takes place for stability so if you are putting in energy then there must be something which releases more energy than this so that on the whole the process leads to stability and stability according to thermodynamics is a state of lower energy so in the first step the, that is lattice enthalpy you first have to provide energy to separate out the ions but in the second step the ions they get solvated or they get if the solvent is water they get hydrated so hydration of the ions takes place or solvation of the ions takes place and what is solvation enthalpy solvation enthalpy is the amount of energy which is given out when the ions they get solvated by the solvent molecules when they get solvated that leads to a stable structure a solvent uh, complex and uh, for example uh, if you had water 
and an iron is present, the water aligns itself around the iron. Uh, if the iron is, let us say, positive, the water molecules align themselves in such a way that the negative oxygen faces the iron and the positive hydrogens move towards the peripheries, making a complex, which is known as the hydration complex. So such solvation complexes are formed and these solvation complexes, they result in stability, so they release energy. So the second factor that decides the solubility of a salt would be solvation enthalpy. It is the energy which is given out when one mole of salt which was dissociated into ions, it gets solvated. And this is always negative because solvation always leads to stability. Therefore, it is always a release of energy. If these are the two factors that decide the solubility of a salt, then when would a salt be soluble? A salt that has a very high lattice enthalpy but low solvation enthalpy will not dissolve. Why? Because on the whole, the process should lead to stability and that would only happen if the solvation enthalpy is greater than lattice enthalpy and the amount of energy that you gave should be less than the amount of energy that was released so that on the whole, the salt and the, the solution, it acquires a lower energy state. And that is a stable state. So, in order for the salt to be soluble, lattice enthalpy, whatever it is, the solvation enthalpy should always be higher than the lattice enthalpy. Only then the salt would be soluble. Let me just read this further. The amount it is always negative because it is always energy that is given out because it is energy released. The amount of solvation enthalpy depends on the nature of the solvent. What would the solvation enthalpy be? That depends on the nature of the solvent. For example, if you have a non-polar, a covalent compound, for example, you have oil and you add uh, salt to oil. Have you noticed that salt does not dissolve in oil, but it dissolves in water? Why does this happen? Because oil is covalent in nature. It is non-polar in nature. And the salt is ionic. It is, it is ionic in nature. It is polar in nature. Now there is no force which is going to separate the positive and negative because the, the solvent is neutral. How is it going to pull the ions apart? That does not happen. This happens only when you have a polar solvent. Then the polar solvent, the positive and negative ion of the polar solvent, it, it exerts or a pull over the ions and separates them. So what is the solvation enthalpy would depend on the nature of the solvent. For example, for a covalent or a non-polar solvent, the um, solvation enthalpy is very small. And if it is very small, will the salt dissolve? Let us say lattice enthalpy was high and solvation enthalpy is small. So you had to provide a lot of energy, but stability was not acquired by release of a great, greater amount of energy. Since this solvation enthalpy does not compensate for that, that addition, therefore the salt will not dissolve in the solvent. So for example, covalent non-polar solvent is small and the solvation enthalpy for ionic or polar solvents is large and therefore we find that salts dissolve easily in polar solvents. Salts dissolve easily in water because water is a polar solvent. Why? Because water has a high solvation enthalpy and what in the case of water we call it hydration enthalpy. So non-polar solvents cannot dissolve salts as the solvation enthalpy cannot compensate for the lattice enthalpy. The salt will dissolve only if the solvation enthalpy is greater than the lattice enthalpy so that on the whole the, so the solution acquires a stable state that is a lower energy state than the initial state at which we started. So for salts to be sol soluble, solvation enthalpy should be greater than the lattice enthalpy and each salt has its own characteristic solubility at a particular temperature. We know that if you have the same salt and the same solvent, if you raise the temperature, have you noticed that if you add sugar or salt to water, um, which is cold, you can, it does not dissolve readily. But if you put the same salt or sugar in water, which is boiling, it dissolves on its own. You don't even have to stir it. 
That is because the, sol the solvation enthalpy or the solubility also depends on the temperature of the same substance in the same solvent also depends on the temperature. So this was about the solubility equilibria of sparingly soluble salts and um, with this I'll finish this video. In the next video I'm going to talk about the solubility product, um, solubility product constant. So with that I'll end this video and in the next video I'm going to talk about the solubility product constant. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.